through niche. Right, so I'm so confident that we're going to get a half a percent Bank of England base rate rise that I'm going to record this video at 11.42. Uh, well, actually, I've recorded most of the video. I'm just recording the beginning bit. Um, so fundamentally, these, uh, the interest rate rise has been priced into the markets. But we're going to look at uh, mortgage rates, not necessarily Bank of England base rates, because what does that really mean? Obviously, it means something for the savers, and it means other things for goods and services. But specifically for mortgages, um, they've been running a different sort of uh, way, right, uh, certainly in the last six months. And that's to do with really pricing around the money markets and how lenders are funded. Uh, obviously, if you are a big lender, then you've got access to saving rates, which means you're, you're not getting screwed both ends. If you are a, a specialist mortgage lender and you have to go to the money markets and actually get your money, um, you know, it's been horrific. Some of those rates have been horrific and the business tap has certainly stopped for a lot of those lenders, the specialist lenders. But we're going to look at um, some of the best rates on the market. So I've picked the best two-year rates, the best five-year rates, the best tracker rates. Uh, that's got early repayment charges and without early repayment charges um, based on a parameters so we can look at and obviously look at it purchases for now but obviously this is really um, a video for people that are looking to purchase that are, their rates are coming up maybe their rates coming up in the next year or in the next two years what should they be doing including myself I've got my own mortgages coming up I've got one coming up next year and another one a uh, year after so forget about you guys what the hell am I gonna do and how do I see it um, so let's look at it and let's look at these figures it is for information purposes guys it's not for advice for tailor-made advice obviously speak to a mortgage broker like niche advice but there are lots and lots of good ones out there so let's crack on and have a look at the chart that's the one right okay so residential rates let's have a look so 95 percent 90 percent 85 percent 75 percent and 60 percent that um looks into the level of deposit people have got so obviously 95 percent is five percent deposit now i've broken these down to a variable rate now variable rates could be a number of things it could be a discounted rate it could be a tracker rate it could be different types of rates that are up and down that are essentially not fixed now different lenders have got different uh, things so some of them have got a bank of england tracker rate some of them have got their own rate that tracks their own standard variable rate some of them have got a discount from their rate so um and and what i've done is i've broken those down to a two-year variable rate and a two-year variable rate without early early repayment charges now we'll look at the benefits of these type of products and where they can be used and where we've seen some product development happening within this sector. Then I've looked at the two-year fixed options and then I've looked at the five-year fixed options. And really what we want to try to make out is, you know, where is this all going to end up? Uh, if you're looking to buy right now, what should you be doing? And if you're looking to get a mortgage, say your mortgage is coming up in the next year or maybe two years, what to do really? Um, some of the things that people need to think about, including myself, because I've got uh, mortgages coming up uh, next year and the year after. So what am I going to do? Forget about you guys. What the hell am I going to do? Okay, so let's look at it. So when you're looking at the two-year variable rates, um, you will see... Um, the ones, these ones would typically have an early repayment charge. Typically, you know, maybe 3% in the first year, 2% in the second year. And in my own opinion, um, doesn't make a lot of sense to really try to go for this. I mean, obviously, in each individual is, uh, is down to their own circumstances. And I've got to go through all of this. It's not advice, guys. I'm just talking. I'm just giving out information for specific advice. Please contact the mortgage broker. You can contact us. Although there are thousands of really good ones out there. But then this one is an interesting one. This product, okay? This is the one that's basically... Um, it's a bit unusual so this product essentially is you go with a variable rate and then you could get out of that rate whenever you want so you're hedging your bet so when the Bank of England rate goes up uh, this will typically go up so these products if they are tracking the Bank of England it's gone up by half a percent um, so it will track this 
uh, and it will go up by half a percent. So this rate will start going up. Okay. So what's the advantage of this product? It just means, look, you're hedging your bet. If you think the market is not going to be that bad, if you're not so pessimistic about the rates, then you would go for this because you think, well, in all honesty, even if it goes up more, um, I st I'll still be okay. Right? You've got to bear in mind, though, the best tracker of variable rate with no early repayment charge is 4.49. Right? Rates have gone up by half a percent. So already, you know, you've got to see what the difference is between the fixed rate, a two-year fixed, and the variable rate. And let's just compare those two because it's, it's really important. So pretty pointless if you're going to go with 95% mortgage. I think that's really risky anyway. So these type of things, I think, work quite well if you've got good level of deposit. Okay? And you're risk adverse. So basically, maybe you're doing a remortgage rather than a purchase. Maybe, you know, because when you're doing a purchase, you've got these huge costs to think about. You know, you've got building works, you've got, you know, get your stuff sorted out, you've got furniture, bits and pieces. So, but if you've already been in a property, um, maybe you're at a low loan to value, maybe you're in a steady job, um, maybe the kids have grown up, you haven't got childcare costs, things like that then it might be worth looking at it because you think, let's do a 60% loan to value. So you've got 40% deposit. The rate is 3.64 right now. Obviously, Bank of England rate base has gone up, so half a percent. So that will go up by half a percent, okay? But it's still lower than the best two-year fixed out there. So the key question is, what do we think the next, next rate rise is going to be? Now, for all indications, they're coming out that there may be a rate rise. There may not be another rate rise after this. Uh, might be a 0.25% rise. Okay, so um, that's really the question. Then you look at the five-year fixes, okay? And I'm still seeing a lot of five-year fixes being taken out. Obviously, I've seen more two-year fixes taken out because a lot of people are obviously uh, listening to the news and the gist of the news is, and the gist of what's coming out of the Bank of England is, look, they think rates are going to go up, and then they think they will stabilize and actually may come down um, after two years or within two years. And that's where, looking at this, what the lenders are thinking. Now, that's not to say anybody's right. Let's be honest. Um, before, I'd say, what, November, December? They were saying, oh my God, rates are going to be 7%, and you know, the markets went wild, and some of these rates were sitting at you know, 6% somewhere. So these guys, just because these guys have forecasted their rates, they don't really know a lot. <laughs> okay? So you've got to make your own guesses, really. It's down to your own circumstances. But looking at it, the rates, the lenders think that the five-year option, so looks to me after two years they believe rates are going to come down or they're going to stabilize dramatically because 4.17 if you've got 40 percent deposit that's not a bad rate considering the bank of england where the bank of england base rate is right now and considering where they think it's going to go right so longer term they don't think it's going to go haywire right but who are they? <laughs> and they didn't, you know, I'm talking about the Bank of England, I'm talking about me, I'm talking about the bank. They don't necessarily know what, what's coming around the corner. But if you are somebody who's, who's you know, um, maybe you're going to have a kids, maybe you're looking to move house, maybe your circumstances are going to change, maybe your job's going to change, you want that stability, then you still have a good five-year fixed option, right? So what are we going to do? Uh, if, you know, so in two years' time, say next year or at the end of this year, your mortgage is going to come up. One of the things you can do is um, go for a mortgage six months before, apply with a mortgage lender, preferably by a mortgage broker. And I'll tell you why. Because the mortgage broker will have good insight of what's going on with the overall market. You may go with one lender but that lender may be very uncompetitive in six months' time or in three months' time before you complete. Generally, mortgage offers and remortgage offers are valid for six months, between three to six months. So you lock in your rate now, and then maybe in two months' time, you have another look and then see if the rates have come down. Great. You ask your mortgage broker to try to get you a new rate. If the rates have gone up from what you've got, then you've locked yourself in. So that's the plan. The plan is for people that are coming up for their mortgages 
get in touch with a mortgage broker, get in touch with us, and we will try to give you that advice around that particular uh, need. Um, what I've seen is this um, tracker to fixed options as well. You've seen it in buy to let sector. We've seen it with major lenders like NatWest looking at this. And I think that's a really good get out call. So where this is a tracker, so you've got no early repayment charges. If you stay with that lender, they'll allow you to fix in at a later date. So let's just say you take a, a lower rate now on a tracker, but oh my God, rates start going up. You have the option to fix in with that lender. And the beauty of that is as long as you've been there for three months, you don't have to uh, underwrite the case again. So no affordability checks, no underwriting checks. And that's really, really important because you know you don't want where people got caught out was as rates increased they had mortgage offers and maybe they lost their property or something happened and they had to rerun new affordability checks with new cost of livings with new interest rate rises and that screwed their deals up so you just got to bear that in mind um, don't listen to uh, me don't listen to uh, the um, uh, the, the BBC and the Sky News and the mainstream news and, and even the Bank of England base rates, place it on yourself and your own circumstances and your own risk profile and where your costs are, where you think you're going to be in the next year or two. That's ultimately where you should be making a decision of going for one of these products. Okay, um, because uh, it's very subjective, and that's why people need advice, and that's why more and more, funny enough, people say, "Oh my God, Payam, um, the market sort of turned. How's your business doing?" I'm saying, actually, we're actually more busier now um, than maybe the same time last year. Although it was a buoyant market, more people have realised that they actually need advice now. Um, so uh, my, the only thing you can, you should listen to is go and get some professional advice. There's been some statistics um, uh, recently to say, look, many, many people are not getting uh, regulated advice out there. Um, and that's because mainly because of cost. Uh, we've seen this in the financial sector in, ter in terms of financial advisors. The problem is um, there was regulation with financial advice uh, uh, many years ago now called RDR, retail, whatever it was called. But bas basically it removed uh, the, uh, removed the um, commissions for financial advisors. So financial advisors could not be remunerated uh, for, for, for their advice. And what happened with that market was all the financial advisors simply went for people that had money because they could charge them and these people would pay for that service. Um, and unfortunately, what that's done is left a whole load of people that would have got advice historically. Yes, the brokers would have made commission out of it, but they would have got advice. And now what's happening, they're all, they're all sort of left uh, to fend for themselves because you know those financial advisors are not interested in you know essentially helping people with no not a lot of money they all everybody's after the uh, the big uh, the big ticket clients thankfully that's not the case for for mortgages and there are commissions still being paid there are brokers that will still fee make money in terms of charges um, what I would say is be conscious I had a case yesterday a client came to me about a year ago. <coughs> um, he had a specific property, and I didn't believe the normal high street lenders will actually lend to him. Um, <coughs> however, I did have a high street lender who we had a track record of lending to him, so I quoted him that lender. He went away um, for whatever reason, whether it was my charges, whether it was our interaction, whether it was the way we worked, whatever it was, he decided to go with a fees free online mortgage broker comes back to me nearly a year after I better look at his credit search and he's had about seven different searches from six or seven different lenders some of them gone to application so he's got to provide these documentation go to application um, and they've basically all rejected the property based on the valuation so that person could have just taken my advice from the start um, the problem is when you're dealing with people that are sort of um, not experienced within the sector they are just essentially an online tool and they just source your mortgage and do that well if that was the case you could do it yourself you can go to I don't know one of the comparison sites and do it the whole point is you want to get advice um, and so that person's actually come back and we've recommended the same lender that we did last year and let's see let's see what happens I don't know whether it's going to go through or not but um, 
uh, there's a there's a story there, and the story is really um, try to um, not just go for cheapest chips because you know ultimately it's about getting a mortgage, getting a deal, getting it completed, rather than just messing around. Um, let me know what you guys think about rates, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, all the best. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.